sometimes you may need to rationalize the denominator. How can we do so? If you ever need to rationalize the denominator, your goal is to get rid of the radical on the bottom. To do that, let's multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 3. 3 times 3 is 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. And so that's how you can rationalize the denominator. So let's say if we have this example, the square root of 3 over 5. Go ahead and rationalize the denominator. So first, we can rewrite this as root 3 over root 5. So we need to multiply the top and the bottom by root 5. Whatever you do to the bottom, you must also do to the top. 3 times 5 is 15. 5 times 5 is 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. So that's it for that one. Now what about this one? 1 over 2 root x. All you need to do is multiply the top and the bottom by root x. You don't have to worry about the 2 because it's outside of a radical. So this is root x divided by 2 times the square root of x squared. The square root of x squared is x, but we need to use the absolute value symbol. And so that's it. Now what about cube roots? Let's say if we have the cube root of 5. How can we rationalize the denominator? Because the index number is a 3, we need a total of three fives on the bottom. Right now, we only have one five, so we need to add two more fives to it. Five to the first power times five to the second power is five to the third power. And now these will cancel. And so, oh, by the way, we need to multiply the top and the bottom by five squared. So let me put that here. This is a very important step. So this is going to be the cube root of 25 on top. And the threes will cancel. On the bottom, it's just going to be 5. So that's the answer. Let's try another example like that. So let's say it's 4 times the cube root of 2. So we need to multiply the top and the bottom by the cube root of 2 squared. So we can get a total of 3 2's on the bottom. 2 squared is 4. And on the bottom, it's going to be 1 plus 2, which is 2 to the third. The cube root of 2 to the third, or the cube root of 8, is simply 2. So this is 4 times the cube root of 4 divided by 2. And then we could simplify that. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So it's 2 cube root 4. Let's try this. Let's simplify the cube root of 3 over 4. So first, let's break it into two radicals. And our goal is to rationalize the denominator. So let's multiply the top and the bottom by the cube root of 4 squared. So we can get three fours in the bottom. Four squared is 16. And on the bottom, we're going to have the cube root of four cubed, which is going to turn into a four. And three times 16 is 48. So the final answer is the cube root of 48 divided by four. Try this one. Three divided by the cube root of two y. So we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by the cube root of 4y squared. So this is what we're going to have on top. On the bottom, 2 times 4 is 8. y times y squared is y cubed. The cube root of 8 is 2, and the cube root of y cubed is y. And so that's the solution. What about this one? 2 times the fourth root of 3x squared. Go ahead and simplify it. 
So we need a total of four threes and four x's. So we need to multiply by three to the third, one plus three is four, and x squared. Three to the third is 27. On the bottom, we're gonna have four threes and four x values. So the final answer is 2, 4 fruit, 27x squared, divided by 3x, where the x is going to be inside an absolute value. Now what about this example? The 7th root of x squared y cubed times z to the 4th. Go ahead and rationalize the denominator. So we're going to have to multiply the top and the bottom by the 7th root of x to the 5th, y to the 4th, z to the 3rd. We want the exponents to add up to 7. So on top, it's just going to be the 7th root of x to the 5th, y to the 4th, z to the 3rd. On the bottom, we have the 7th root of x to the 7th. 2 plus 5 is 7. 3 plus 4 is also 7, and 4 plus 3 is 7. So this is going to be 7. the 7th root of x to the 5th, y to the 4th, z to the 3rd, all divided by x, y, z. What about this one? Go ahead and rationalize the denominator. Get rid of all radicals on the bottom. So how can we do that? The only way to get rid of a radical whenever you have two terms is to multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate. So the conjugate of 4 minus root 2 is 4 plus root 2. So on the top, we're going to distribute the 5. 5 times 4 is 20. And 5 times root 2 is just going to be 5 root 2. On the bottom, we're going to FOIL. The two middle terms will cancel. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times root 2, that's just going to be 4 root 2. And then negative root 2 times 4, that's negative 4 root 2. And then finally, negative root 2 times root 2 is going to be uh, just negative 2. So these will cancel. And 16 minus 2 is 14. So this is the answer. As you can see, there are no more radicals in uh, the denominator of the fraction. Here's another example. Go ahead and rationalize the denominator. So we're going to have to multiply the top and the bottom by 4 minus root 3. So on the top, we need to FOIL. 3 times 4 is 12. And then 3 times negative root 3, that's negative 3 root 3. And then we have root 2 times 4, which is 4 root 2. And then root 2 times root 3, that's uh, root 6. On the bottom, we're multiplying conjugates with each other. So we know the middle terms will cancel. 4 times 4 is 16. Root 3 times root 3 is just 3. Now we can't simplify anything on top because there's no like terms. So the final answer is just going to be 12 minus 3 root 3 plus 4 root 2 minus root 6 all divided by 13. But the good thing is, we got rid of any radicals in the denominator. So that's how you can rationalize um, something like this. If you have two terms at the bottom, just multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of the denominator.